well, there's a new webcaster in town. <laughs> it just wouldn't be level one if we didn't talk about what Epifan is up to with their video production products. Now, let me tell you, the Epifan products are, have been some of the most uh, fun products that we've messed with on level one. We've done level two techs, which if you didn't see that, you should totally check that out. It's about the Epifan Pearl 2, which is a higher end sort of production studio in a box. It's sort of midway between the DIY solution where you cram a bunch of capture cards in a PC and, uh, you know, like a full broadcast TV station in a box, sort of mid-range price-wise as well. We also covered the first webcaster, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a lot of fun putting that video together. So Epifan has come up with the Webcaster X2, and in a lot of ways, this is an improvement over the previous product. So what does it do? Why do you need it? Well, this is it. This is pretty much it. I've got it hooked up. It's basically Android in a box. You plug a camera into it, and you can stream to the internet, and that's all it does in life. That is its sole purpose. Yes, it is a little bit of a niche product. Uh, yes, it is a little pricey. It's $300 US. But Epifan, I think, has a philosophy which is, you know, create a product that does one thing, make sure that product does it well. And so we really like Epifan products for projects that we've used things on. So anywhere, like you just stick a camera and you need a camera to stream to YouTube or Facebook, there's really not anything better that I've encountered um, that will do that. I mean, yes, you can do that with Open Broadcaster. Yes, you can string something together with a PC. But this is Android in a box. It's got HDMI in. It'll also do USB in for cameras. Uh, it, it's really, it's a really interesting niche product, niche product, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I don't know, depending on what part of the world you're in. I don't know. But it works really well. It has a built-in Ethernet interface, so you can use a hardwired connection. But it also does wireless. And so if you wanted to do uh, streaming over 4G, you know, thinking like Periscope or something like that, but you want to do a little bit more professional version, you can do like what we did, which is to combine a, a nice camera, a nice-ish camera, like the, uh, uh, this is the the, uh, the uh, G7 from Panasonic. Uh, it doesn't have hardware stabilization or anything like that, but typically this camera is on sale for around $400. It is a 4K camera. This device will run at 720p or 1080p, but the 1080p camera, the quality of the picture that comes out of this camera at 1080p is really just unbelievable. It's, it's a micro four thirds sensor, so there's not really a lot of light hitting that sensor to begin with, but it's a fairly inexpensive camera, decent lens, and if you imagine Periscope, but with this camera, you can do that with this, you know, just a little USB battery pack, and you're good to go. Now, of course, it only comes with a wall adapter, so you're sort of on your own to provide DC power if you're gonna use it in that use case. But let's say that you've got you know a concert hall or a bar or somewhere that has live events how cool would it be if you just turn the box on and as soon as you turn it on it's streaming to the internet that's what this is that's what it does and it does it well so the first version of this product you could get the facebook version or the youtube version and that was one of the main things that we did not like about the first version of the webcaster well they fixed that in webcaster x2 uh, basically at startup you can just pick which one you want it seems like this is actually running an android operating system we tried to get into developer mode but uh, could not quite get into developer mode but the android application there's a facebook version and there's a uh, you know youtube version and the device pairing works really well because the device pairing process is really easy when you turn it on it and it's plugged into the internet and it gets a an internet you know a route to the internet basically It'll phone home to either Google or Facebook, and it'll get a device pairing code. And then you just go to google.com slash device and enter the pairing code, and then it'll associate it with whatever YouTube account or whatever Google account that you're logged in with. From there, it's just a matter of clicking go live in the UI. Now there's a full Android preferences screen that you can go into that lets you pick your resolution. It streams at 720p by default, but you can pick 1080. Facebook only just in the last few weeks as of the time of this video added support for 1080p streaming. Uh, it supports bit rates up to four megabit. So uh, two megabit is the default. And again, all of that works exceptionally well. The device also has three USB ports. So for configuration, we plug in a USB keyboard and mouse to the device and then hook it up to a, an HDMI monitor. And then we're basically able to, you know, browse the device, click on stuff, and everything works. There's one extra USB port 
on the HDMI input side that works with a USB camera. So if you have a one of the nicer USB cameras, you can plug that in and use it instead of an HDMI source, although that feature is in beta in the firmware. Now we've had this, we've been testing it for a couple of months. We've, we've done some of our live stream with it. You guys may have seen the MSI live stream. Uh, this was involved in the, in the live stream there. Now the first uh, couple versions of the firmware, we had some issues. Our, you know, our cameras want to output 4K, but there was something wrong in a handshake because these devices will, will go down to 1080p if the right handshake takes place, but that was not taking place until the most recent firmware update. So we're happy to report that Epifan has fixed these. If you picked up one of these and it's like, oh wait, it's not working with my camera, be sure that you've got a firmware update. Updating the firmware on these is really just stupid easy. Like you just turn it on and it says, oh, there's a firmware update and you do it. You don't have to put the firmware on a USB stick or anything like that. It self updates from within the device. So I do have to say that using Android as a, uh, as a base, I think Android Lollipop, so it's Android 5, uh, was probably a good move for Epifan on this device in terms of forward compatibility and being able to use it for the future. Now I'm hoping that we get to have a little bit more fun with this device and do something fun like, like level two techs. But in terms of like device competence and functionality and that sort of thing, it works really, really well for what it does. Again, you are paying a premium for the functionality. I mean, $300 is kind of a lot for a device that does 1080p 30 capture. But if you wanna just stick one of these somewhere and just turn it on and say, hey, it works, uh, you know, there's there's no price that you can put on having somebody call you and say, hey, that stream computer that you set up is uh, is not working and I'm not really sure what's going on. Can you help me with that? Versus this, which is, is it on? Yeah. Did you click start streaming? No. Click start streaming. <laughs> there's even a preference in the Android preferences UI where you can specify, as soon as I'm turned on, just start streaming. So literally you turn it on, it starts streaming. If you want it to run that way, it runs that way, which is pretty great. Another cool feature of the hardware is that there's a tiny little LCD screen on the very front of the device that'll give you the pairing code in case you need to repair or somebody revokes access on the Google account, but it shows you the status, you know, no HDMI in or that it's booting or that it has a pairing code or whatever. So you don't necessarily have to have an HDMI monitor hooked up to it all the time, but you can and it gives you a full UI. Another really cool feature of the UI, especially if you're streaming to you know, Facebook or YouTube with a live audience and you're paying attention, like you're wanting to interact with the audience, is that there is a chat that's available on the device. So you'll get an overlay with the recent chat messages from either Facebook or YouTube, depending on where you're streamed. You can't stream to both, uh, but the device will give you that overlay on the screen so you don't need a separate device like a laptop or something like that to see what's going on in your chat. And if nobody's posted a message or whatever to your live stream in a while, it'll just automatically disappear. There's, a, there's an option to automatically hide the UI when there's no activity. And when you do that, then you'll just get full screen video until somebody says something, then it'll shrink it and you'll get your chat window next to that, which is a really nifty feature. I think this device would be great for bars and live venue events, even small schools like a, like a community college or another college where they need an easy button to stream a lecture with a single camera. If you need multiple cameras, definitely check out the Pearl 2. But uh, you know, for a single camera setup or even using like YouTube's multi-camera stream would work pretty well with this device. Although because of the way that it works with the pairing thing, I'm only able to use stream now. So I hope that that's a feature that they add in the future. But uh, you know, yeah, just imagine that you've got three cameras, three webcasters streaming to three different uh, camera devices on YouTube and then the, the viewer can just pick which angle they wanna see the thing from. I think that would be pretty cool. But the software will have to be updated for, for that feature for that to work. In addition to that, there's also a micro SD port on the side. Although at this time, there's not really anything in the firmware that will use the micro SD port. So maybe they'll allow capture to a micro SD card or something like that in the future. Not really sure, but for now, it doesn't really do too much. So if you're thinking about this product or this product looks interesting, be sure to check out the Epifan website and the Webcaster X2. You can find more about the features and how it works and, and that kind of thing. Overall, I've been really pleased with the uh, the Epifan products that, that we've tried. We've, we've tried the 4K capture, the original Webcaster, and the Pearl. And the level of engineering that goes into these products and the stability of these products, especially in the video world, because I mean, let's face it, if you work in video, everything is flaky. I mean, even Adobe can't get Premiere correct. It doesn't use all the cores, it crashes a lot, it's basically a terrible product, but everybody uses it because there's not really a lot of other choices. So yeah, it's not, and so most video products follow suit. 
Most video products are weird and flaky and, and have problems unless you get really, really expensive. So it's kind of mind blowing that Epifan, a relatively small company, is able to pull off such quality in their products. If you need a dedicated streaming box where all you do is turn it on and it starts streaming, this is a good value. So. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and if you have any questions about the Epifan Webcaster X2 or you want to do some super technical weird stuff with it, well, level one is the place that you want to be for those questions, so head on over to the forums. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later. It's booting! It's booting! It's booting!